it on my laptop screen Ready for the Python scene All those lines of text so clean Let's code and chase that dream Python world, here we go In this video, we're going to be taking a look at the split and join method in Python. These are two very powerful methods that we can finally start utilizing now that we know a little bit about both lists and strings. Let's get into it. So now that we know a little bit about lists, we can talk about split and join. Split breaks a string into lists of substrings based on a specific delimiter that we give it, whereas join combines lists of strings into a single string with a specified delimiter. Delimiter is just a character or a string that separates different values. So we can see these as complementary methods. Split breaks a string into a list, and join combines a list into a single string. Let's now take a look at the syntax for the split method. Remember, the split method takes a string, and it turns it into a list by cutting up the string wherever it finds a certain separator or delimiter character. And it takes two parameters. The first is the delimiter to look for in the string, and it's going to be the point where we cut it up. And this is optional. If we don't give it, it's going to find wherever there's white space and cut up the string at wherever there's white space and return a list of those substrings. If we do specify a delimiter, it could be one character or a string, so multiple characters, then it's going to cut it up at that specific delimiter that we pass to it. The other value, and we rarely actually use this one, is max split which would be the number of times we're going to split the string. It defaults to negative one, and in most examples, we won't even see it given. And negative one means that split the string wherever the delimiter occurs. Now, I know that could be a little complicated, so let's take a look at an example to make this clear. We're actually going to look at two examples, one with the delimiter given and one without the delimiter given. The first example is without the delimiter given. So we're calling the split function with no parameters at all. So it's going to default to splitting anytime it finds white space characters. If we take a look at the text we're sending it, which is Python space is space fun, there's two points where there is white space. So what split is going to do is it's going to split the string at these two space characters, and it's going to return a list with three values like this. We'll have Python, is, and fun. Each one of these is its own string inside of a list. Also note that the space characters have been removed. So the delimiter is not included in the result. The second example is with a custom delimiter. So in this case, the string's a bit different. It's name, comma, age, comma, city. So there are no white space characters. That's fine because we're giving the split method a custom delimiter, which is the comma character. So now split is going to look at the string and split wherever there is a comma rather than wherever there is white space. So in this case, there's two commas, one between name and age, and one between age and city. So the output is going to look like this. We'll have three values in our list, which are going to be equal to name, age, and city. The comma is removed because split removes the delimiter. And this sort of system is very useful when we're processing data like CSV data, comma-separated values. And this is something that might come up in an assignment, or at least another example. And this is fairly useful because it allows us to take in this data, which is separated by commas, and then split it into each one individual data for later processing. We'll probably get into something like that in a later video. So let's now take a look at a more complex example using split, because split can be extremely useful. So what we want to do is create a program that is going to have a function named sensor that takes as input a string to sensor, and by input, I mean it's going to be a parameter to that function. And it's also going to have a list of words to censor. The function should return a new string with any words that were in our list of words to censor replaced with asterisk characters. So what you can do is try writing this program yourself and then unpause to take up the solution with me. Or if you don't want to do that, you can just watch and we'll go through the solution together. Let's give you a chance to pause. And now we're going to switch over to PyCharm and try out this problem. OK, here we are in PyCharm, and we're going to work on this problem. Now, I have a little bit of starter code here just to help us out. And this isn't anything special. It's just going to drive this sensor function. So we're setting up a string that we're going to censor. We have some words to censor, which are going to be test, censor, and hide. We're going to be passing that list of words to the function, as well as the text to censor. 
and we're going to get back the censored copy of the text, and then we're going to print it to the screen. I also have the header for the function set up here. Right now, we just have the pass keyword. So this isn't actually going to do anything at all. If we run this, it's just going to output none, I believe. Yeah. So now we want to actually fill in and code this sensor function. So the first thing we're going to need to do is we're going to want all of these different words in text, like this is a test sequence, as its own word in a list. This is helpful because it will allow us to process the words one at a time and check if they're in our sensor list. And luckily, we just saw a function to do that. So words is going to be our new list. That's going to be a list of each word in text. So there should be one element for this, one element for is, one element for a, and so on. So we're going to use text, and we're going to split that. And we're not going to give any arguments to split. So that means it's going to split at white space. Wherever there's a space character, it's going to split that. Now let's just get a look at what's going on right now before we code the rest of it. So what this should do is just output this list of split words and the value none because we're not returning anything. So we can see that split successfully split the string into different words. This is a test and so on. So that's a good start, but now we need to process each word and check if it is in our list to censor. So we're going to loop through each word in the words list using a simple for loop. Remember, this is going to list through the loop for the values in the list words. So that's going to loop once for each word in this list. And now we are going to check if it is in our list of words to censor. And we can do that with an if statement. We're going to say if word is in words to censor. Remember the keyword in allows us to check if an element is in a list. So we're saying if this word is in this list of words to censor, then we are going to create a new string. So we are trying to create a new string in this function, and that is something we forgot to do. We need to set up our new string that we're going to create. Let's say censored string. And we're going to set that equal to the empty string. And as we loop through the words, we're going to either add censored words to this string, or we're going to add the words just as they are if they're not to be censored. So if the current word in the list of words from the sentence down here that we're being passed to the function is in the list of words to censor, then we want to add some text to our censored string, but we want to make sure that's all asterisks. So for now, we're going to say censored word, and we're just going to set it to four asterisks for now. And we're going to add that to our censored string. Now, the other case we have to deal with is if the word is not to be censored, which case we just add it to our censored string just as it is. So this is going to go for each word in the sentence that we're passed. And it's going to add each word to censored string. And if that word is a censored word, instead of adding the word, it's going to add a bunch of asterisks. But we also want a space, we'll add that space character. Because we want that space back. Remember, splitting is going to remove the delimiter, which is a space. So all the spaces in the word would, or in the sentence would be removed. So we need to add them back. And then the last thing we need to do is actually return the new string. So we're going to return censored string. Now there is one issue here, and that is there's going to be an extra space at the end. But let's give this a run and see what happens. So we can see this is a censored sentence with some words to censor and censored. And if we could see it, there is an extra space on the end here because we're adding that extra space here even if it's the last word. So if we want to be perfect and we don't want that extra space, one thing we could do is use the strip method. The strip method removes any leading and trailing spaces. So this one will remove that extra space at the end, as well as any extra spaces at the beginning if someone were to add one by mistake or something like that. So this would remove any extra spaces at the end of the string. Now, the other thing we could improve here is right now we're just always replacing this with four asterisks, regardless of how big the word is. We could be a little bit more technically correct and put the right number of asterisks. 
And the way we could do this is using string repetition. Remember, if we times a string by an integer value, it will repeat that string so many times. And we can figure out how many letters we need by checking the length of the word. So in this case, word is a string. It's one of these words from the sentence, like this is a test. So length on the word would tell us how many characters are in the word. So for this, it would be four. For is, it would be two. A would be one, and so on. So when we multiply the asterisks by this, we'll get that many asterisks. And now we're adding the censored word here. So when we run this again, we should get a different number of asterisks depending on the word that was censored. So that's a little bit more correct. We can also see that space at the end of the string is gone. There are other ways we could improve this as well. For example, right now this check is case sensitive. So if one of the words to censor was this, it wouldn't match this with an uppercase T. That's fairly easy to fix. We can just convert the word to lowercase. And now it should be case insensitive. And it will still add the uppercase version of the word because we're not converting it to lower here. We're just converting it to lower when we're checking. And remember, this doesn't actually edit the word. It creates a new copy of the string that's in all lowercase. So calling lower here has no impact on what the value of word actually is. Now, the last issue that we could have is if this had punctuation. Like if we had a dot or a period, then it would be hide with a dot on the end, which wouldn't match hide. Let's see, we can try that out. One of the censored word is hide, and now we have a period at the end, and it won't censor that because that dot is part of this word. So one other thing we could do to improve this was to use something like the replace method to replace any punctuation. I'll leave that as an exercise for you at home. So this seems to be working now. So let's switch back to the slides. And we're back to the slides. Here's that solution again, or at least a version of it that I coded earlier, but should be fairly similar. And again, this is what the output is that we got, with those words being censored. So now we're going to talk about the syntax for the join method. Recall that this combines lists of strings into a single string. It's sort of the opposite of split. And the syntax is string dot join for the method name, and then it takes a value, which is some sort of sequence that it could loop over and join into a string. And the values in the sequence have to be something that can be converted into a string. So an important point to note here is the string at the beginning is going to be the delimiter. So that's going to determine what's going to go between each of the values in this list. The list here would be what we call iterable, which means it's some sort of sequence that it could loop over. Let's take a look at an example. And we actually have two examples here, one where we have a space as the delimiter and one where we have a comma as the delimiter. So in this first one, we're giving it a list of words, Python, is, and fun. It's a little bit hard to see here, but there is a space between those quotes. So that is going to be the delimiting value. So it's going to put a space between each word to form a new sentence, a new string variable. So in this case, those values were Python is fun. So it's going to put a space between each and we get the output Python space is space fun. So you can see how this is the opposite of split. Now here's one with a more interesting delimiter. In this case, it's a comma. And in this case, we're going to call join on headers. So this might be some headers from a CSV file, name, age, and city. And it's going to put that comma between each value to create a string. So it would be name, and that's going to add a comma, age, and that's going to add a comma, then city. And the output would look like this, name, age, city, and that would be a string value that's being printed out. Now, when we combine split and join together, we can get some fairly impressive results. So here is an example that reverses the words in a string. We start by having the text Python is fun in the variable text, and then we use split to split that into a list. We get a list called words, and it has the values Python, is, and fun in it, each its own string. Now, if you recall from our earlier lecture on lists, one of the functions we talked about was the reverse function, and this reverses the values in the list. So when we call this on words, we would get fun, is, and Python, all in one list. Not one string, but one list. So each one's its own element in the list. Then when we pass this to join with the delimiter of a space, it's going to create a new string by adding a space in between each one of those strings in the list. So the result would be fun is Python, with space between fun and is, 
and a space between is and Python. The last line is print line, and we're going to output the result. We get fun is Python. So without even using a loop in our own code here, we were able to reverse all of the words in a string. That's all I have for you in this video on the split and join methods. Now that we understand both lists and strings, we can start utilizing these in our code, and they are quite powerful. I'm sure they'll come in useful in assignments and other work you're doing in Python. Thank you for watching, and have a great day.